not necessarily a move that I would make. I would probably um, say thank you for the good times. Uh, fortunately, there are more bad times or more times of, I don't know, frustration of what could have been. But the Mets are likely, uh, according to an uh, article, the Mets are likely to make a qualifying offer to Michael Conforto. Now, he may not, that, not get that much annually, but may secure a longer-term commitment if he can secure, say, this is my just opinion here, if he could secure, say, a four-year $60 million with second-year opt-out and 35 paid out in the first two years, it would make sense to go with the safer money. A lot will depend on the CBA. Personally, I, I think the changes should not come into effect until after the 2022 season. So free agency is in stagnant and guys like Conforto can make decisions. What, for example now, what if Conforto uh, accepts the qualifying offer and gets a one-year deal, but then the new CBA uh, does away with compensation picks or qualifying offers altogether? Now, he just would have gotten boned into signing a one-year deal when he could have done substantially better for himself. But I bore you with this talk yet. Um, but And, you know, just on a, on a local level here, I think the fans need to accept that he's very streaky. So was David Wright. Sometimes he looked as though something was wrong with him, and other times he would have carried the New York Mets. Um... Uh, you know, as as though the ball, the baseball just seems like beach balls coming in. That's what type of a hitter he was. I'm pretty sure that this is something that can't be cured by teaching or, you know, by teaching or correction. And it strikes me that the analytics solution is to tell the hitters what they should doesn't help. A lot. Just me. Um, but sometimes you gotta leave the fan favorite aspect at the door, much like the Astros did with Springer. Sometimes you have to make decisions based on results and money, and less on emotion. I hope all is well.